Hey everybody, I'm Paul Lydell and I want to tell you about horizontal pentatonics and how you can use them to break out of those old skill patterns and be able to play over the entire fretboard. So let's learn the pentatonic boxes. So if we're playing in the key of A minor, here's an A minor scale. And on the bottom two strings on the B and E strings, we're going to be playing notes on the 5th fret and the 8th fret. So 5-8 and 5-8. We're going to call this box Long Box. To the left of Long Box, we're going to have Left Box. Notice that Left Box and Long Box share those two notes. So we have Left Box, Long Box, and Right Box is to the right of Long Box. So we have long box followed by right box. Notice how right box and long box share these two notes. Continuing up from right box, we're going to call this next one table. So table will use the frets 10 and 13 on the B string and 10 and 12 on the high E string. Following table will be chair. Chair is going to be 13 and 15 on the B string and 12 and 15 on the high E string. So imagine a chair sliding underneath the table. So here's table. And at this point, the notes that these two boxes share is the point where you can imagine that the chair slides underneath the table. So that's all of the pentatonic boxes. There's a total of five. You have left box, long box, right box, table, and chair. If we continue up, we get to left box once again. So this box is the octave of this box. So we can go all the way up the whole fretboard on the B string and E string like this. Left box, long box, right box, table, chair. Once again, left box, followed by long box, and right box. Let's play long box an octave lower on the D and G strings. And let's play all of the boxes on the D and G strings and go straight up. So we're going to play long box. followed by right box. So notice that these two notes now are shared by long box and right box. Once again, following right box is table. So notice that right box and table share these two notes. After table, we have chair, and these are the two notes that table and chair will share. After chair, we're right back to left box, followed once again by long box. So let's play the boxes on the D and G strings, starting uh, with long box. So long box, this is going to be frets 2 and 5 on the D and G strings. After long box is right box, and this will be frets 5 and 7 on the D and G strings. After right box will be table, frets 7 and 10 
on the D string and frets 7 and 9 on the G string. After table is chair and for this one we'll play frets 10 and 12 on the D string and 9 and 12 on the G string. This brings us back to left box which would be played on frets 12 and 14 on both the D and G string. We can take this long box, which is starting on the note E, we can start that on the low E string and play all the boxes on the E and the A strings. So we'll start with long box, using the open strings. After long box is right box. After right box is table. After table is chair. Here's the notes that these two note these two boxes share. So here's chair. And then left box. And we're back to long box. And to the right of long box is right box. Followed by table and chair. So let's learn how to use these boxes to play all over the fretboard. Um, the thing that I did at the beginning of this video was using uh, really just a couple licks. Um, this lick uses right box into table. I'll play that slowly. Slide, pull off, so we start on the 8th fret B string, go to the 10th fret B string, and then 8 and 10 on the high E string, slide up to the 12th fret of the high E string, and then pull off to the 10th fret. And we're going to go ahead and pick B13 and B10. We can play that lick an octave lower, or two octaves lower. So this gets us from right box to table. Now after table is chair. So in this lick we're going to slide from B13 up to B15, and then hammer on, pull off. Uh, from the B or the high E string on the 12th fret to 15, and back to 12. So far we have Then we're going to slide from 15 to 17 on the B string, once again with the pinky and play the last two notes of the lick on the 15 and 17th fret of the high E string. All together played slowly, it sounds like this. That was the first half, and then... Followed by... We can start at right box on the D and G strings. So here I went from right box to table. Now I'm going to go into chair. And slide into left box. Now I'll play the same lick two octaves lower, starting with right box, sliding into table, and then sliding through chair, and into 
left box. So that sounds like this. Which is what I played at the beginning of the video. Now we can also take uh, the same idea and play it descending. And the descending lick that I played at the beginning of the video sounds like this. So here I'm starting with left box. And then sliding down with the index finger. So I'm playing uh, 12 and 10 on the A string. 12 and 10 on the E string. And sliding down to 8 on the E string. I'm going to hammer back on to 10 and then pick both 7 and 10 on the A string. Then we're going to have two index finger slides. I'm going to slide from the index with my index finger from A7 down to A5. And the pinky is going to play E8 and E5. So far we have this. Now I'm going to slide from the A string, 5th fret, down to the A string, 3rd fret. And finish the lick with E5, E3, and E5. play that lick uh, in different octaves. I can start here on A on the G string and play the lick uh, on the D and G strings. So I'm going to be going through left box. That's chair. Here's table. Right box. You could also start on E or A on the E string. Now I can use a connector lick to get from the set of strings B and E to the D and G strings. And uh, my connector lick is going to look like this. So that connector lick is high E string, 12, to B15, to B13, G14, back to B15, G13, no, B13, and then we'll end it with 14, 12, 14 on the G string. So this lick moves our lick from the E and B strings onto the G and D strings, and that would sound like this. Play the first eight notes of the lick. And now use the connector lick to jump to a different set of strings. Now I can continue down the D and G strings. Like that. I can also take our ascending lick and join that together with uh, the same type of connector lick. So here's the entire ascending lick. Now if we put the connector lick after the first eight notes,
here's the ascending conductor lick, and this is going to be. Like that. So E string, eighth fret. A string, fifth and seventh fret. And then the D string, fifth fret. To seven on the D string. Back to D5. A7. And back to D5. This lands us on the note G on the D string and sets us up to play the lick again, this time on the D and G string. I could use the connector lick an octave higher. Like that. Uh, that's those notes played an octave higher, and that would be on the D string, 10th fret, to the G string, 7 and 9. Now on the B string, 8 and 10. Back to 8 on the B string, and then G9, back to B8. This lands me on the note G and sets me up to play the lick. On the B and the E strings. So I can play from here all the way up to here using the connector lick like this. I can also use a different type of lick to move uh, between the boxes. We could start at the same. Let's start with the uh, right box on the D and G strings. So once again, I'm going from right box to table. But this time, I'm going to slide my index finger up into playing chair. So I'm going to slide up to the 10th fret on the D string. Now I'm going to play the rest of chair, but then I'm going to slide up into uh, left box. So uh, this type of lick is kind of like you were playing the boxes. Ascending and then descending. So it would be right box going up and uh, table going back down. And chair going up and then left box going back down. Then long box going up and right box going back down. So if we do that using slides, we have this. Now slide up to 10th fret. And that was chair, and I'm going to slide into left box. Slide up to long box. And slide into right box. So we can slide forward or backward going through the different boxes, like this. I could go backwards or forward. I'll go descending.
sped up, it sounds like this. And I can play that in uh, different octaves as well. So that's a cool way to get from box to box and be able to travel the fretboard horizontally. Another cool way to travel the fretboard horizontally is to take the pentatonic scale and make it a three note per string scale. And that would look like this. So I'm taking these notes and playing them in a three note per string pattern like this. So I'm finding the notes A, C, D, E, and G, which are these notes. A, C, D, E, G, and then A, C, D, E, G. I'm going to find those notes, three notes per string, A, C, D, E, G. So to do that, I would play frets 5, 8, and 10 on the low E string. I'd play 7, 10, and 12 on the A string. Then 10, 12, and 14 on the D string. G string, 12, 14, and 17. B string, 15, 17, and 20. And on the high E string, we'd play 17, 20, and 22. So those are some ways that you can use the horizontal pentatonic boxes and use the horizontal pentatonics to open up your solos and uh, have more, f more freedom on the fretboard. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. I'm Paul Lydell, and I'll see you next time.